Welcome to our lectern line. Now we're ready to do a couple of classic examples. We're going to find the improper integral of 1 over x evaluated from 1 to infinity and the improper integral of 1 over x squared evaluated from 1 to infinity. And as we had indicated before in the first video, that this does not converge and this does converge. Well, let's take a look at it. 1 over x, it doesn't diminish as quickly because it's 1 over x instead of 1 over x squared. So you can see there's more area here. And the question is, does it, does it converge quickly enough asymptotically to the x-axis for the increased area to become so small that it becomes insignificant and therefore it does converge? Or does it take too long and the area continues to be significant and it continues to increase no matter how far you go out the increase is significant and therefore it does not converge to a, to a particular value or number. Here you can see that 1 over x squared converges a, a lot more quickly, gets much more quickly close to the x-axis as you get in this function, so there's more of a chance that it will converge. But now let's go ahead and work out the two integrals to see if it does, if they do or not. If we integrate 1 over x dx, of course the integral of that is the natural log, and we're going to evaluate that from 1 to infinity. Now, in most cases, we can actually plug in the final limits and we get a good value. Either it converges or doesn't converge. And sometimes we'll have to use that definition where we take the limit as t approaches infinity before we can evaluate it. But in this case, there's no problem. This is equal to the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of 1. Of course, the natural log of 1, that's equal to 0. So this is equal to the natural log of infinity. And the natural log of infinity, well, that never converges to a single number. The, log, the natural log of infinity is indeed equal to infinity, and therefore it does not converge. Now when we integrate that integral, that's a little bit different. This can be written as the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the minus 2 dx. So when we integrate, we add 1 to the exponent, x to the minus 1, divide by the new exponent, and evaluate it from 1 to infinity. Rewriting it just a little bit, so it looks a little better, this is equal to um, minus 1 over x, evaluate it from 1 to infinity. So now when we plug in the limits, we get the following. This is equal to minus 1 over infinity minus minus 1 over 1. So we plug in the upper limit and now subtract when we plug in the lower limit. Now negative 1 over infinity, that's always going to be 0. And the negative times the negative is the positive, so that's 0 plus 1, or 1 is the limit. So we can say that it does converge. The area underneath the curve from 1 to infinity underneath the curve 1 over x squared is equal to 1. And you can see it's a singular number. The function converges or the integral converges and we can see the difference now. This one continues on forever and the area continues to increase. Here the decrease, the asymptotic approach to the x-axis is quickly enough so that any additional area on the curve is so minuscule that it simply is not effective in making the number change and it eventually converges to the number one. And that's the difference between these two classic examples.